Hello there, beautiful people, and welcome back again to On Our Channel. For people that don't know, my name is Enes, I'm working for you. So if you have any questions, any video requests, make sure to drop them online in a comment. I will be happy to make a video for you. And for people that do know, welcome back. And please be a witness for that because I made over 250 videos so far on Shopify customization. They were mostly requested by you guys. And I know some people not even subscribers, but I'm fine with that. I still make the video for them. So don't hesitate, man. If you have any video requests or any questions, just drop me a comment below. I will be happy to provide you the information you need or even make a video for you. And yeah, you don't have to subscribe. Or maybe now you should consider doing so because if you don't, you lose. Now it's a very different chapter on this channel. I usually share small customizations, but now we'll be sharing complete sections and widgets, highly customizable to make a Shopify store very unique and professional without having to pay for those expensive teams or rely on those expensive developers or even worse, paying for those monthly subscription applications that will drain your money and it's not a very good idea for long-term projects. But I'll give you a better deal. Scroll down to the channel, check out the videos in the section I'm sharing and I'll let you be the judge and I'll respect your decision. But for now, let me show you how to actually add a 3D collection carousel slider on your Shopify store by using your own custom code and no applications involved as always. And this is not any ordinary uh, like collection carousel. This is a very, very unique one with 3D effect and it's highly customizable with custom fonts options and many, many more options that you don't even need. I add them for you just in case. And without any more talking, let's just jump to it. As you can see, this is Shopify down team. So I always start with completely new team, nothing on it. And each video I add small customizations. By the video like 60 or 70, the team will be completely different. But I think now I'll reach that level already. For example, check out this all in one reviews that will show reviews from multiple sources, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Etsy, all in one carousel, and it's filterable. If I click on Google, it will only show me the reviews from Google, and so on for Facebook and Amazon and the others. Or even better, check out this recent sales notification that will show you the recent sales on your Shopify store by using your own custom code, and it's highly customizable. You can customize the behavior for it, for who to show up to, and the position, returning visitors to show up for returning, yeah, to show up for returning visitors or first time visitors, and the behavior and intervals and colors and so on. And by using again one, <laughs> your own custom code. And many, many more things that I can't mention all in one video, otherwise it would be boring. But now let me show you actually how the 3D collections carousel slider it looks like and how to add it. But first, let me show you how it looks like. So I will start scrolling right now to show you the carousel. Everything that you see in the Shopify store has been done in tutorials. So if you saw anything that you like and you think it looks good and you want to implement it in your store as well, then just check out the channel. Because what's is here, it means it's already done in one of my previous videos. I don't remove the changes from here. I keep them so people can see them. And here is the collection that I'm talking about, the carousel, the correction carousel that I'm talking about. As you can see, it's very clean. It has uh, a custom font for the heading and also the most important thing as I said which is 3D. Let me show you how it interacts when I hover over it. For example if I hover over this one as you can see also the other ones even the text interacts as well and the button interacts as well it looks very professional. If I hover over the button it, as you can see it's interactive and also the button in here on the left is interactive as you can see and also it has this fade effect in the corners you can actually disable that option if you don't and no you don't have to dive into the code or anything like that it's actually by using the custom uh, the settings on the section so you don't have to write any code or edit any code and let me switch to the mobile and show you how it looks like on the mobile so i will switch to the mobile right now and i will reload the page let me switch to them oh yeah by the way this one is actually the, a pop-up reminder, uh, abandoned cart pop-up reminder that will show up only when the user trying to leave. As you can see, I was uh, trying to uh, switch to the mobile from here and it detects the mouse cursor just like, just like I was trying to close the page or leave. Then it will show up and remind the user how many products you added to the cart and yes, by using your own custom code. So <laughs> let me switch the mobile from here. 14 Pro Max will be perfect, yeah. Uh, let me reload the page. So if I scroll down to the carousel here, here is, as you can see, how it looks like. And of course, you can swipe using the finger, as you can see. You can swipe through the carousel using the finger or use the arrows as well. But mostly on the mobile, you need to, like most people, swipe using fingers. And each card on the carousel is actually a picture option. You can set a different, actually, let me quit talking and show you how it, you edit and all the settings it has for customizations. So let me switch back to Shopify dashboard. So the first thing we're going to do is access Shopify dashboard because I already removed it. Let me reload the page so you can see. 
as you can see, it's gone now. No more. How to add it? It's very easy. Get back to Shopify dashboard. If you aren't in Shopify dashboard, click on the online store, then click on teams, then click on the three dots to the left of customize and click on edit code. Because as I said, this is our own custom code, no applications. So in here on the left panel, you see this folder right here which says section. Simply click on it, then click on the first one, which is add a new section. And it will show you this prompt right here. We can name the section and simply name it collection dash carousel. Just like you see on the screen and click on done. After a couple of seconds, it will create some code here by default. Make sure to remove the, the whole code in here. And in here, we need to pass in the code for the section. And where are you going to get that section? From the description box, of course. But wait a second. Wait until you see how it functions and the options it has and how it works. Then see. If it suits your purpose and you think it looks good, go get it. If not, just stay tuned. I have many, many more sections, free things, and many more things coming in the future. But for now, let me assume that I already did. If you did, open the file with any text editor on your computer, then copy the whole code inside it, then simply pass it in here. That's very simple, right? Then click on save button, wait for a couple of seconds, it save it. We'll get back in here. And by the way, all the sections are developed by me and my team. So everything is developed by me again. And let me click on customize because we need to add the section. So click on customize after you added the section, the code for it. Then let me scroll down or uh, go to the page where you want to add the section. In my case, I'm going to want to add it to the home page. So let me scroll to the same position below the scrolly logos in here. And yeah, scrolly logos, I did them in tutorials as well. And I have that section in my videos. So click on add section. And in here, the section is actually called art carousel. And you will see here it is. It may show up below the the FAQ section. Let me drag it up. Okay, now it's good. Uh, it looks a little bit tight. No worries. To increase the space, I have the option for top padding in here. Let me increase it. It should give more space. Yeah, now it's good, I think. Yeah, now it's good. So I will go option by option in here to show you how to customize it to make it uh, suit your Shopify store. But first, let me add some pictures. So to add the car, I mean the collections. To add the collection collections, you can add actually even products. This is like a very, all my sections are very flexible. And you will see that in a second. So in here, on uh, below the section on the left panel, you see these blocks right here. This is the collections. If I click on it, and it will show you image options because you can set your own image, like custom image to each section. Let me, uh, I mean collection, sorry. So let me go over in here. Let me pick, for example, this bottle right here. And this is the image for the first one. And below it, the collection title. Collection title, I'm going to name it as supplement because it's relevant to the picture. And below the button shop. Now I'm going to keep it same, but the button will not show up unless you add a link. And from, from here, you can add the link, as you can see. If I click on it, it will show me all, everything I have in my Shopify store. Collections, products, page, blogs, blog posts, policies, everything. So you can pick in here, actually, if you want only to set this to as single product or a collection. In my case, I'm going to add collection, anything, it doesn't matter. And I have the option here for open and a new tab, which is very handy if you want to add the, uh, the section on the home page. If you want to add the home page, I would recommend you to enable this so the user will keep the page open and the link will open in a new tab. I'm going to enable this option for me as well. And let me add the others quickly. So here we go. I added a couple of collections just for demonstration. Now you just it over to the settings. Click on the uh, section from here and it will show you all the settings in here. So the first one is obviously the heading. The heading for the section, this one right here. It says on how collections by default. Customize this to suit the purpose of your store. In my case, I'm going to keep it just the default. And below is the description, which is description below the heading right here, as you can see. In my case, I'm going to keep it as default. And below is the button. The button again will not show up unless you add a link. So let me add a link. So let me pick actually a product from here. Here we go. And the button will show up. And no worries, you can actually adjust the space between the heading and description and the description and the button. All my sections are highly customizable. So in here, you can enable actually, as I said, open a new link, the tab. I'm going to enable this. I mean, open the link in new tab and below because we can add actually a custom font to the heading, to this one, this heading. So I'm going to do that. How to do that? Simply uh, find any font that you like online, then download the file, then hit back to Shopify dashboard, then hit back to content from the left panel, then click on files. And this section or all my sections will support every font extension. So find any font that you like, download the file for it, 
then upload it to your, just simply drag it in here, it will be uploaded, then simply copy the link for it using this button. For example, this is an OTA file, which is, stands for a phone. I'm gonna open the link for this one, copy the link, sorry, then get back in here, I'm gonna paste it in here and should add the custom phone in here as, as you can see. And we will resize the heading later. So below is the visual effect, which is this shadow effect at the edge. If I disable this, as you can see, it's gone. If you want to have it like more cleaner look, you can disable this option, as you can see. If I enable it, should add the, edge, the shadow effect at the edges. I'm gonna keep them. And below is enable the autoplay. The autoplay is, it doesn't need the user interaction for the carousel to move. So you can disable this if you don't want the autoplay. So the carousel will not move unless the, unless the user actually click on one, one of these buttons or swipes on uh, using his phone. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna enable this. Then you can pick how many seconds until the, color, the carousel moves. Five seconds by default, which is perfect. In my case, I'm gonna keep it five seconds. And below is the section padding, which is the top padding. I already increased this in the beginning, so make it more perfect. And below is the bottom padding. In case you need more space, you can increase it or decrease it if you don't need more space. Uh, let me add, adjust it actually, like this is perfect. And below is for the mobile. For the mobile is perfect at 16, but again, test, trial and error until you see the exact size that suits your Shopify store. And below is the spacing for desktop because this is based on subscribers from my channel. They always ask for like resizing or spacing adjusting adjustment for both desktop separately and mobile separately and i got you guys all my sections now have that so in here the space uh, after the heading for desktop if i increase this it will increase the space below the heading as you can see let me actually decrease it yeah it's perfect now and the next option is the space after the description if i decrease it the space after the description will be gone it looks good now i'm gonna keep it and below is the mobile same settings but for the mobile the space after the heading and the space after the description and the, uh, the space after the button, below the button, and then the space, the navigation, this one's on mobile, you can actually adjust the space between the carousel and the navigation arrows. So as I said, everything is adjustable. And below again is the uh, resizing for the text. So the first one is the font size, heading, the heading font size. If I increase it, we'll increase the size for the font. As you can see, it looks too much now. Let me actually decrease it a little bit. Like this, perfect, yeah. And below, same option again for mobile. So each resizing option that is separate for mobile and desktop. So you can set different sizes for each device. And below again, description size. If I increase it, it will increase the size. Now too much, perfect now. And the same below is for the mobile. And again, button uh, font size, button font size for mobile, collection title size. If I increase this, it will increase this one right here as you can see. And also for it for the mobile and below the collection button uh, size, font size, I mean the text on the button, uh, you can increase that. And below is the option for it on the mobile and below the same settings, but for the heading and the description. And this one should be up there. I'm not sure why I didn't adjust that. I will adjust that later. And the last one is custom CSS. If you want to add a custom CSS and this one exists on every section and as you can see this is how to add it and adjust it it has also uh, i don't know where it didn't show i think i did background color you can adjust that mine is white i'm gonna set it as white yeah it looks perfect now as you can see and the most thing i like is the interactive and how it looks it looks very professional if you have any questions make sure to drop them below and also this section will come with a comprehensive pdf guide that will help you with every option how to set it up and also my personal contact in case you need me. But for now, I think my job is done. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.